the physical is sick, the spiritual is sick. Encounter us in the space. We came to meet you, Father. We came to meet with you. So encounter us. I step out of the way, God, that you may have your way. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in God's house. Hallelujah. Anybody excited to be in the church this morning? Woo! Yes. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is beautiful. Not just to come into the building, but to come and know that when we come, we encounter Jesus in this space. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are doing a series now that we are talking about the miracles of Jesus. And last week we started with uh, Jesus' miracles on provision. And we say God is a God who delights to provide for his people. And we see how he's provided abundantly over and over. And, and in the text that we, we looked at last week, we saw Jesus multiplying the bread, taking what was in the hands of those disciples and multiplying it to feed 5,000 men plus the women and children, approximately 10 to 12,000 people. And we said most often what God wants is what do we have in our hands? What we have in our hands, because when we bring what we have in our hands, then he can multiply what we have in our hands to bring abundance to it. And this morning we are looking at the miracles of healing of Jesus. Anybody believe in God for a miracle for something, for healing for something? Uh, for a family member, for maybe your own emotions? Uh, we are going to look at the text that uh, it's, 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 it's beautiful, but I think just has a lot of emotions that is wrapped to it, uh, to the text. But I want to start with the, the scripture in um, uh, 10 John 2, the Bible says, Above all, I wish that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. That's God. Um, uh, John is writing from this encounter with God. He says, this is God's desire. God says, above all, I wish that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospered. So even as we look at God as Jesus, the one who, is, who does miracles and who heals, Jesus doesn't just want us to get healing when we are sick. Jesus' desire is that we walk in health. And just like the Bible says, healing is the children's bread, and when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, God provided manna for them. When the time they entered the promised land, they had to walk to inherit the promises. So there are times when God, God steps in to produce a miracle, to bring our body back to the space of wholeness. But sons and daughters actually have to walk and, and do the, how do I put it? Do the parts, the principles that keep you healthy. It means wake up in the morning and, do, and walk. Sons and daughters have to do that because that's God's desire that I prosper and be in good health. So when I wake up in the morning, I don't lay in bed for 24 hours. And expect my body to function well. No, I wake up and I walk because that's God's desire. And I'm partnering now with God to see God's desire become a reality. I drink some water and not just soda. And I do some part that I have to do. So we are going to go to that uh, this morning. Thank you so much, Sarah, for leading us. Thank you. That was beautiful. Oh. Uh, so that was, that's like an introduction. So let's look at this story. Let's look at the context. I'm imagining Jesus. I, I've been looking for my prayer shawl. I couldn't find it because I have one of those Jewish thing, uh, prayer things that they had in those days. So they, I pretend, I'm going to pretend that this one is like the color is white and then it has those blue stripes and the gold stripes around it and all of that because it should have all of that around it. So unfortunately, this is black. Oh my. <laughs> but, but. Jesus is on his way, and most Jewish rabbi or Jewish men would have a shawl, a prayer shawl that they wrap. It was like their outer cloak that they carry around them. So when they are walking, it's longer than mine. It goes all the way down. And so when they are walking, they have this cloak that 
covers them and goes all the way down apart from what they are wearing as their clothes. So Jesus on, is on his way to do a miracle. Jairus, uh, one of the Jewish leaders, meets Jesus on the way and says, Hey, Jesus, please, my 12-year-old daughter is dying and I need a miracle. And Jesus is like, come on, let's go. And they are, Jesus is on his way with Jairus and then the other disciples and the crowd follow. You know how the crowd will always follow to see fun things like miracles and they are following and suddenly there is this woman from nowhere who steps in and interrupts Jesus. She interrupts Jesus going for, like that Jairus said, my daughter is at the point of death. Jesus comes, so it looks like an emergency. Why would you interrupt Jesus when he's going for an emergency? In my mind, I'm thinking that Jairus is probably there like, come on, who is this woman making Jesus to stop? Who are you? Why would you stop him? My daughter is at the point of death. Don't stop Jesus. But you know that Jesus, there is never an emergency with Jesus. Because every time Jesus reaches, it's always on time. We might think that it's getting late, but anytime Jesus steps in, Jesus is always on time. And this woman is not afraid to interrupt Jesus. He's not inter inter afraid to interrupt Jesus' schedule. And I wonder how many times we feel like we are boring Jesus. Or you feel like your issue, God, this one is too small for me to be talking to you about it. I want to let you know that Jesus is never offended by you boring him. Jesus doesn't feel, doesn't get offended when you are talking to him about every little detail. He actually delights when you tell him every little detail. So don't worry about interrupting Jesus. It's quite okay. That's why he's Jesus. <laughs> it's okay to interrupt him. So this woman interrupts Jesus. And the amazing thing about this woman is the text tells us, we don't know if she's a Jew or a Gentile, but most in, 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 in for several years, theologians have believed that she was a Jew. Uh, so I'm imagining that if she is a Jew, the first thing is, she is bleeding for 12 years, as long as the Jairus' daughter has been alive. She has been sick. She has spent all the money she has. And either because if she's married, she must be divorced because there is no normal Jewish man who will keep a woman for 12 years who sees her period every day. Because he would automatically be defied. You can't touch her. So it's either this woman probably maybe she started, she fell sick. Immediately she started her period, testing her period in her teenage years. And it's something that has continued all the way to this time. An average Jewish year at that time of Jesus was in the 40, 45, 48 like that. So I'm imagining she's in the late 20s or early 30s. If if she started, if she met, if um, uh, the period, if she started bleeding immediately at that time. So she's probably around that age range. And so it means she's probably has been single all of her life because no man will marry her. But then in case she got married and it started after marriage, she will be divorced. Because her husband would have been like, oh my. Six months we can take it. One year, let's manage it. I'm not going to the temple. But the, the, we all know how the temple was valuable to the Jews or how it is valuable to them now. So for a man not to go to the temple, that was where life happened. So he prob she probably would have been divorced. And so now she's all alone by herself. All her brothers who are male probably have like, hey, we love you, sis. I don't know, there, was, there were no cell phones. Uh, can we send you a letter? Here, take, this is, we are thinking about you, we are praying for you, but from a distance. So she was isolated. She probably was dealing with depression. She was feeling a sense of abandonment. She was feeling all alone. And not only that, she was financially bankrupt. And then her body is still not well. Just imagine the state of that kind of person. I, I, I don't know if she had forgiveness, if she had offense against the people who didn't love her or didn't come close. I don't know how she dealt with that. The text doesn't tell us. But I'm imagining this woman is not only physically sick, 
but she's physically sick. She's spiritually sick. She's emotionally sick. She's financially sick. She's sick all round. And she comes to Jesus, or she hears about Jesus, that Jesus is doing miracles. Jesus is healing the sick. Jesus is setting the captives free. And she decides in her heart, the Bible says something that is so important and so significant, is that a woman says to herself, if I can only go and touch the hem of, she says to her, before she meets Jesus, she decides that she will get healed. Does somebody get that? Before she ever goes to meet Jesus, she says to herself, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. Jesus doesn't, know what I am, doesn't need to know what I am doing. I am the one who needs to know. All I want, Jesus, is to touch the hem of your garment, and I know I will be made whole. And as I said, Jewish rabbis and men, they carried all of this thing around them. And they had this... Uh, Things that would hang around them like this or at the edge. And most of it was like the Ten Commandments, the laws, the promises of God towards for the children of Israel that they carried. And most often when they are walking, they will recite that as a reminder of God's word and God's promises to them. If they carried it to prayer all the time. And on the, like at the edge of it, there was like one of it that was like blue in color. And it, it, it's called like the wing or the sleeve, like the last one, like the wing or the sleeve. And theologians believe that when this woman says that when I go and I only touch the hem, it's not just this part, it's the hem, the sleeve of his garment. It's, she's referring to the text in the Old Testament where the Bible says, and there shall be healing on his wings, the wings of Jesus. So she's like, I know that if I can touch that part, that hem that carries healing, I know and I know I'm going to be made whole. And so this woman leaves her home, breaks all protocols, is not concerned about who is going. I don't know if she probably covered herself and disguised because she shouldn't be in the crowd. She's defiling all the men around her that she's getting close to. She breaks up protocol, presses through the crowd, and goes forth and touches Jesus. And the Bible says immediately she touched Jesus. Jesus said, whoosh, I feel power left me. When was the last time you touched Jesus? Because it's easy to come to church and never touch him. It's easy to sing songs and never touch him. It's easy to pray and it's just a ritual and never touch him. Miracles happen when we touch him. There is nobody through church history who has ever touched Jesus and remained the same. Uh, this week as I was preparing, I thought of the story of one of the God's generals, John G. Lake. John G. Lake grew up in a family, I think there were like 19 in their family, you know, in those days. So many children, healthy from the start, but then somewhere in the middle, it's like sickness and death and sickness and death. And he said in his teenage age, all he could remember about their, about their family was sickness and death. They died until only four of them were remaining. And it was during that time, he encounters Jesus gets married, and leaves home, and is living happily, and then sickness, two years into his marriage, sickness strikes his wife. And John G. Lake gets the news, he's already a Christian now, gets the information from the doctor that his wife had just a short time to live. And so his heart is crushed, and it's like, Jesus, no, she has children, I'm all, what is going to happen to our child, what is going to happen to our future, what is going to happen to the ministry? that we are supposed to do together. And he started, he goes to the text of scripture and started reading scripture. As I said, God, what do you say about healing? And what do you say about healing? And as he searched through the text of scripture, he realized that Jesus was truly the healer. But not only that, he attended a meeting of one man of God called John G. Amal, Alexander Dowie, he was praying for the sick and the sick were, he were healed. And so it was in that process that his wife, gets miraculously healed. And she's restored and she's whole. And in the later leave um, uh, the U.S., they were in New York and leave, and God calls them as missionaries to South Africa. 
And when they go to South Africa, they're in South Africa for years. And then there was this plague. Anybody remember there was a plague in the, like, I think it's the 1800s or early 1900s in South Africa that was killing many. I think it was probably almost like Ebola. Anytime you got in contact with it, nobody got in contact with it and lived. And so he was losing church members and losing church members and losing church members. And he was like, God, this is not, you didn't call me to be burying people. That's not part of my calling. And that's, that's a hard one for pastors. You didn't call me. To, if somebody's of age and they have lived a full life, that's okay. But when you're young, no, shouldn't. So um, uh, he went before God and take this text and started praying. And then that's when he saw that, no. So the spirit of life lives in him. And so it's almost like God, you know, like a light bulb. He has this encounter with God that the light bulb shines on his heart. And he goes for the calling that one of the members was critically at the point of death. He's like, I'm not burying anybody. Went forward and prayed for the, for the member, and the member was instantly healed. And then his church member started volunteering to help and take care of others. And the news started coming like, how are you guys doing this, taking care of? All those who are sick, others are, getting, are dying, getting this virus and dying. And why are your church members? And he said, because the spirit of life lives in the inside of us. And it, the, 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 the scientists were like, explain to us. He said, okay, bring a virus, put it on my hand, and put it under the microscope. You see that it's dead. So they took a virus, put it in his hand, put it under the microscope, and it died in his hands. And they were like, there is something with you that is wrong. He says, because the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. But you know, I, I'm a, I'm a, the only reason why um, John G. Lake could walk in that was because of an encounter with Jesus. And we don't have one encounter with God. It's several. It's several. It's even you've seen Pentecost, the Bible says after the day of Pentecost, when the believers were persecuted, the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit came again upon them again another time. So, miracles are real. They are happening. The reason why I shared this was because it's current day. It's not Bible one. And even in recent days, there are miracles happening every day. And God is doing incredible things around the world. And so this woman comes to Jesus and stretches her hand and touches the hem. Of his garment. And Jesus says, I feel power left me. And the woman's issue of blood dries instantly. <laughs> and she's made whole. And Jesus is like, Who touched me? Like, come on, who touched me, Jesus? You have crowds around. The disciples are like, Jesus, we are all here. Everybody's boggling around you. And Jesus is like, Say, no, no, somebody touched me. And to me, that is so significant because all the disciples even were all around Jesus. People were touching Jesus, but only this woman got what she wanted from Jesus. She alone got what she wanted because she had her mind made up. She knew before she ever came, I'm going, I'm going to get healed, I'm going to touch Jesus, and I know that when I touch Jesus, I will be made whole. What is that thing in your life, that area in your life where you know you need to touch Jesus? Where it's time for you to say, God, I, I've been praying about this, but I've been praying this civilized prayer. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, God, thank you for this. God, if it's your will, if you really like to change it, please, God, uh, change it if you like it. I don't really mind whatever you do. I'm going to take. Come on, people. We are sons and daughters of the king. What do you want? What do you want from Jesus? Do you just want to hang around and just touch him and just play around Jesus so that it's like I've been around Jesus? Or do you want to touch Jesus? When we really touch Jesus, miracles happen in our spheres, and then miracles start to happen through us to others. So this woman touches Jesus. Her life is changed. Her life is transformed. She's made whole. She's, she's healed. But imagine, she's not only physically healed, but guess what? Her finances are no more stolen by the enemy. Because all this time, everything she got was going to hospital bills. So not only is Jesus restoring her health, Jesus is restoring her finances. Not only is Jesus restoring her finances, Jesus is restoring relationships that she lost. People who could not come around her, families that have been distanced from her, now these families are finally coming around her again. 
People she couldn't visit, now she can walk to their homes and say, how are you doing? Jesus delights to heal because Jesus knows that when we are whole, it impacts a lot more of our lives, a lot more areas of our lives. So this woman is made whole, she's healed, she's restored. Physically, she's restored spiritually, she's restored financially, she's restored all round in her life. And the disciples, let me read a, a few of verses of the text again for you. Hopefully I can see, I don't have my glasses. Oh Lord, am I going old? Jesus, have mercy. Okay, I need to take it off. Okay, I'm going to just start from verse 25 again. It says, and there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all she had and was not better, but neither grew worse, but rather grew worse. She had heard reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched her garment. And she said, if I even touch his garment, I will be well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she, f and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in him himself that power had gone out of him, immediately turned about the crowd and said, who touched me? And the disciples said, you are you see the crowd is pressing all about on you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had touched her. But the woman, knowing what had happened in her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you whole, has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of all your diseases. Two things that I want us to see, and I'm going to wrap up. The first one is when Jesus, when this woman is going to Jesus, he said, I know that if I touch him, I will be made whole. And then Jesus comes later, or I will be made well. The, Jesus comes later and say, woman, your faith has made you well. The word in this, the word there is sozo, S-O-Z-O in, in uh, Greek, says, it means your whole, you are like nothing is broken in your life. You'll be made whole. You'll be saved. You'll be restored. You'll be healed. Like that one word means. So the woman, Jesus is not like saying you have been just made whole physically. It's like everything that was broken is being made whole. It's being restored. It's being put back together. It's like everything is being put back together. But the next thing I want us to see is that Jesus doesn't get defiled by this woman's defilement. If this woman would have touched another man, they all would have had to go away for one week and do a cleansing. But Jesus doesn't get defiled by the woman's defilement. Because Jesus is the only one you can come to with every trash. And when he takes the trash, he turns that trash to beauty, to clean, to nice. And so when this woman touches Jesus, instead of this of Jesus being defiled, Jesus purifies the woman and makes her whole. But he doesn't get defiled in the process. Because that's who Jesus is. And so this morning, as I was preparing, one of the things I was thinking is, maybe you are, we might not be physically sick, you're healthy, you are strong. But at times we carry a lot of emotional baggage that we've tried to let go of, and we can. Some of it is baggage from childhood. Hurts that we've really not. The scars are still so bloody. They are trying to heal, but they can't heal because every time we scratch them. And so the wound just unlocks and then blood starts to flow again. And this morning, Jesus, the healer, is right here. And if you would, if you would touch him, if you would just stretch your hand and touch the hem of his garment, Jesus, can heal you. 
of that hurt. He can fill your heart with so much peace, so much healing that you become confused. Why are you so at peace? Have you ever been so at peace that you are worried why you are at peace? That's what Jesus does. Somebody offends you so much that you're worried why you keep loving them. And like you are trying to respond otherwise. But because God has touched your heart in a way that is so profound, all you can do is just but love. Because God has brought the healing that God alone can bring. Or you might not need that healing for you. You might be needing that healing for somebody in your life. Somebody who is precious. Somebody who has been carrying so much for so long. And you know they need to let go of that weight. And what is funny is that when we carry the physical weight, the, the, the hurts, the pains, it impacts our physical bodies. When we allow the emotional weight to weigh on us, it will impact our physical bodies. And it might be somebody you're saying, God, I need you to step into this situation. God wants to heal that. We don't have to carry it. It, is it easy? Not always easy. It's hard at times. But if you will let Jesus, or if you will stretch your hand and touch Jesus, he can heal that part too. Jesus that we serve is the healer. There's no sickness he can't heal. There is no disease he can't make whole. There's no defilement he can't purify. So this morning in this place, I'm going to wrap up with the text that we said in Ted John 2. Jesus says, John says, I desire above all that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. How is your soul? Is it prospering? How is your body? Is it healthy? How is your mind? Is it whole? Let us pray. Take a moment. Just talk to Jesus. Where do you need healing? And maybe you don't even need any physical healing, but you're saying, God, I want to touch you like, like this woman touched you. I feel like I've been walking with you, but I've just not really had that kind of depth of encounter that changes everything about me, and you're saying, God, I want it. Make your request known to him. Tell him. Don't try to be protocol with Jesus. He understands it's okay to demand much more from Jesus. Yes, Lord, here we are in your presence. We thank you that you are our healer, the one who, who comes into our brokenness and you, you mend it and put it back together and make something beautiful. The one who mends our broken bodies and brings wholeness to us, God. So this morning, Lord, I pray for those of us in this sanctuary and I pray for those who are watching online, Jesus. I pray first for, for those who might not even have a relationship with Jesus, who need that spiritual healing in their soul, who need to encounter you, who, who need to be saved, who need to experience the love of Christ. The Lord, you would open their eyes to receive your love and receive your grace and receive your mercy. And I pray for everyone, anyone who is physically sick in this place, I speak healing over every infirmity in the name of Jesus. I pray for church members, God, who are going through different health challenges. Some are not here. We ask that your healing grace will be activated in their lives even now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of infirmity. We speak wholeness and health and strength and vitality, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for those who are emotionally sick, bound by hurt and pain, and things that have so trapped their soul and hindering them from flourishing. We pray that that hold of the enemy be broken from off their lives. Let it be a release. Let it be freedom, God. For them to live in the fullness of who you are calling them to be. We ask, God, that your healing grace be so active in this church. Be so active through us in this church, into the community. Let it be so active in the lives of our family members, God. We thank you. That you do much more exceedingly, abundantly than all we can ever ask. 
we can ever think or imagine. We give you all the praise and glory, God. In Jesus' name, amen.